It dawns on me that while we've been working on building our theological vocabularies, I've excluded one very important term. Or should I say that I've simply assumed that we know the term and what it means. That's because I use it so often, I don't even think to define it or talk about what the term itself means. I won't keep you in suspense. The theological term for today is theology. Hello, I'm Stuart Baskin, pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Tyler, Texas, and this is your daily devotional for Monday, October 9th, 2023. On Saturday, we learned that theodicy, the term we use to describe discussions surrounding God and the problem of evil and suffering in the world, is a mashup of the Greek words theos, meaning God, and dike, meaning justice. Likewise, theology is a mashup of two Greek words, theos again, and logia, the Greek word often translated as word or words, but which also covers all speaking, including doctrine. We find this root logia in many English terms like ecology, psychology, anesthesiology, and words like that. Hence, the word theology is really about the disciplined study of God or the gods. I say God or the gods because theology is not limited to Christianity or even to monotheistic religions, religions that believe in one God. But for our purposes, I do want to focus on Christian theology or the disciplined study of the things that pertain to the God whom we know in Jesus Christ. But even within this limitation, we're still looking at a very broad field. In our tradition, theology includes any of the various ways we try to make sense of God and what God wants with us. Notice that it is about our attempt to understand. It is important to know because when we talk about theology itself, we're not talking about what has been revealed, but rather about our attempt to understand it. Read an account of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, for example, and you're reading about a revelation of God. Theology encompasses the ways we receive and interpret the meaning of that revelation. Now, right off the bat, someone will say, but I don't interpret the meaning of things like the resurrection, I just receive them. These are the same folks, I suspect, who sport the bumper sticker that says, God said it, I believe it, that settles it. But this is actually a self-deception, for from the very moment we receive a revealed truth and talk about it, we are already interpreting it. So in the broadest possible sense, we are all theologians interpreting what we've received. But this is often undisciplined interpretation, and I would contend that at some point, disciplined study is required. That's what biblical scholars and theologians do. It is also, by the way, what preachers do. Every sermon you have ever heard is a bit of theology coming from the lips of a more or less skilled theologian. Now, as a total aside, one of my early mentors in ministry was one of our former ministers, T. Hartley Hall, who served here in the late 1960s and early 1970s. Hartley later became president of Union Seminary in Virginia when I studied there in the mid-1980s. One of the things he taught was that one of a pastor's most important roles is to be a resident theologian for a congregation. That image has stuck with me and informed my ministry for 40 years. Now, broadly speaking, there are three kinds of theology that you'll be exposed to. Systematic theology, historical theology, and moral theology, or as it's more often called in Protestant circles, Christian ethics. I'll go out on a limb and bet that most people, when they think of theology, think of systematic theology. This is the attempt, as the name suggests, to take the faith and systematize it, to create a system of belief based on the witness of scripture and in conversation with the long history of the church. This is the kind of theology that gives us a lot of non-biblical theological terminology, but also seeks to define terms that we encounter in the Bible, like election, predestination, grace, idolatry, justification, and the like. 
These are just some of the biblical terms that we've encountered. But there's also terms like original sin, perseverance of the saints, providence, exegesis. These are some of the non-biblical theological terms we've explored. Systematic theology takes these ideas and attempts to fashion, to create a coherent system of belief, emphasis on the word system. Historical the theology, by contrast, studies the development of the church's beliefs and doctrines through the long history of the church. When I talked about the clash between St. Augustine and Pelagius, I was doing some historical theology. This way of studying theology has the virtue that it helps us remember not only what we believe, but how our beliefs came into being in the first place. One of the dangers facing the church around the world these days is the rise of some, but by no means all, non-denominational churches that have cut themselves off from the long history of the church. They are in danger of trying to reinvent the church's beliefs with no reference to the many episodes in the history of the church that handed the faith on to us. Finally, moral theology, or Christian ethics, asks a different set of questions. Not just who is God, but what, what does God want with us? What does God call us to do? My own doctoral studies were in this field. Discerning listeners to my devotionals over time can sometimes quibble with my systematic or historical theology, and that's because these weren't my doctoral focus. I think most preachers, wittingly or unwittingly, practice theological ethics or Christian ethics all the time. It is what we do in preaching. We want to be able to talk not only about the faith and its content, but what its practical implications are for our lives. So, bottom line, every Christian is a theologian just by virtue of reflecting on the faith. But to do theology justice, to do our faith justice, requires a commitment to disciplined and prayerful study and reflection. That's what theologians do. Tomorrow, one more Theo word, theophany. But for now, may God continue to bless you and keep you in all that you do this day and in all the days ahead.